Welcome to this episode of Morning Report Emergency Medicine. I'm Alec Weir. This is the case of B, the radiologist. Sometimes we're orthopedists, sometimes we're cardiologists, we're always resuscitationists, but today, turn down the lights, get your monster energy drink and your flaming hot Cheetos, lock yourself in a tiny room, we're gonna be a radiologist. We're talking AP, plain films of the pelvis, in the setting of trauma. This is our normal, and now you're going to see the reason I went into medicine and didn't go into art right here. Reading a pelvis film can be analogous to my art skills. Just stay inside the line. You can also think of your pelvis in terms of three rings, your larger main inner pelvic ring, and the two smaller rings made up by the rami. Now I like to start from the top and work my way down. I like to follow the iliac wings first on both sides, and I stop right when I get to the acetabulum, but I check both sides for any cortical irregularities that may indicate a fracture. Take a look at the pelvic ring. I didn't draw my line all the way across. Now there is a fracture that can go across the sacrum here. You have to take a look at right at this area to see if there's any irregularity in the lineup between the ilium and the sacrum. And I go all the way around, check the, the superior pubic rami, I check the pubic symphysis on my way down, and I check the ischial ramus and the inferior pubic rami, again looking for any cortical irregularities. Then I check the two inner circles here, that's made up by the superior and inferior and ischial rami. And then this is not the femoral heads. These do not outline the femoral heads. Like, this is checking the posterior wall of your acetabulum, places where you get your posterior femoral dislocations, and then also your acetabular cup, and I check both sides. So that's how I read a pelvis film. You just gotta make sure there's no cortical irregularities. It's just the way you do with any other plane film. But I like to have a system the same way I do with chest x-rays. This is our first case, 40 year old male, no past medical history, status post, MPC, blah, 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 it doesn't matter. These are trauma patients, okay? We're talking about reading plane films of the pelvis in the setting of trauma. Here we go. We're gonna do it a little differently this time. I'm gonna leave it up, I'm not gonna say anything, let you guys take a look, and then we'll talk about it. Let's take a look at the read. There's an impacted fracture of the right sacral ala with offset and slight overlap of the pubic bodies, suggesting a possible locked pubis. Let's take a look. Let's see if we can see that. Let's go by our system. Take our iliac wings out here and you can see maybe there's some irregularity as it lines up with the sacrum and the beauty of the pelvis. If you see irregularity on one side of a ring, you should probably look to the other. But check in on our outside. Iliac crest looks fine. On the other side, same. Going to the inside, right here. We have a break in that line. You have a cortical irregularity between your sacrum and your ilium. And that's that offset right ala that they're talking about. Go ahead and all the way around, all the way around, conk. You should not have any irregularity in this ring. Following the system out the rest of the way, posterior acetabulum looks good. Acetabulum on both sides looks good. Take a look at your inner rings here and your ischial and inferior pubic rami. Second case, trauma, right? Trauma, trauma, trauma. Let's get to the pictures. There are fractures of bilateral superior pubic rami and inferior pubic rami, and then sacrum partially obscured by overlying bowel content. And you can see overlying bowel, this sort of area is generally obscured. You can see he has a Foley in place, and he's actually gotten some contrast through it, but that's not what we're looking at. Let's follow the system. We look at our iliac wings. Everything looks good. Check on this side, same. Go to your inner ring. You know, there's a gap here, but there's no large irregularity between where these two bones meet. All the way around. And now, I've seen the read, but when I first looked at this, this is subtle. The right side is difficult to see, but you can see here, there's a little bit of an irregularity. And now is that just an offset of the way the patient is turned? You know, it's difficult to say. You gotta look at the other side and nothing too impressive. But on the left side, you can definitely see cortical irregularity here. And as you look on the opposite side of the ring, cortical irregularity here as well. And then you can actually see the lucency through the entirety of the superior pubic rami. You look at your posterior acetabulum, your acetabular cup, looks good. Looking at your inferior pubic rami, boom, right there. You can see there's a small cortical irregularity. I'll get my mouse out of the way that you can see. Look on the other side, right there. There's your other cortical irregularity. Left-sided superior and inferior pubic rami fracture. The right side's a little more subtle. I may be making it up because I've seen the read, but the left side, definitely present. Again, trauma. Thank you. 
I will tell you, please ignore all of the sub Q air that made your fast exam completely useless and impossible, and we'll focus on the pelvis. There's a comminuted superior, inferior left pubic rami fractures, and then osseous fragments projected over the left posterior acetabulum with apparent lucency, which shows a possible acetabular fracture. Let's take a look. Iliac wing is clear. Other side also looks good. Go to the inside of your pelvic ring. Sacrum lines up well all the way around. You know, patient's a little rotated. Is this a little bit of pubic symphysis that's not quite lining up? I think it looks okay. Boom, very large superior pubic rami fracture. You look on the inner portion of the ring, pubic rami fracture, and then check the other side. You have an inferior pubic rami fracture there as well. Post inferior portion, we already found this fracture. This side actually looks okay. Inside of the ring, check your posterior acetabulum. That's this line right here, as well as your acetabular cup. Now this one's subtle. I'm not sure if if you can see it very well in the plain film, you could see it on their follow-up CT that was done. This is the bony fragments they're talking about. These small pieces here, that's a possible, possible posterior acetabular fracture. Just for bonus, he's got multiple transverse process fractures here, here, and here as well. So that's it, those are our three cases. Some different pelvis fractures that you can take a look at. But this is my, my plea for the pelvic binder. These fractures can be associated with a large amount of bleeding, so have a low threshold for applying that pelvic binder. And remember, it goes over the greater trochanters. Our take home points are to follow the lines. This beautiful drawing, this mind opening, expanding drawing that you've just seen with all these pretty colors on it. This is what I use. Have a system in place, the same way we do for chest x-rays. I think it's important to have a system for the AP pelvis. It'll help you identify those subtle fractures even outside of your CT abdomen pelvis. But also remember the single view is insensitive for fracture and in the right patients, in the right clinical setting, when you have the right amount of concern, get that CT. And then I'll throw in my little two cents about the pelvic binder and its importance in the sick trauma patient. Thanks for listening. As always, you can follow me at weir underscore Alec or subscribe to this channel for more information. And I want to thank one of our first years, Natalie Ciano, for the help with finding these cases.